Let's have a look at section 3.3, which is about statements with multiple quantifiers. Um, in the first two sections of chapter 3, we talked about quantifiers, the universal quantifier, the existential quantifier. Um, talked about now also negations associated with uh, quantified statements. But here, for the first time, we'll be looking at statements that have more than one of those quantifiers. So let's start with this. There exists a student X such that for all class sessions Y of discrete mathematics, X attended Y. Okay, now what you're going to discover as we go through this is not only do the quantifiers matter, of course, um, but the order that it, they're written in makes a difference in the meaning of the statement. And we're going to look at some different variations uh, here where we can move things around or, or reverse quantifiers and see how that affects the meaning. Okay, so reading through this one more time, there exists a student X such that for all class sessions Y of discrete mathematics, X attended Y. So if we think about what this is saying, and you might want to pause the video and just kind of give it some thought um, before you continue, or not. Um, but uh, if you think about what this is saying, this is saying is that there is a student that attended every class session. Okay. And, um, you know, we begin with the existential quantifier, so we know we're talking about that there's some students, and then what follows is telling us what the statement is saying about that student. Okay? And of course, we know whenever we have an existential quantifier, it doesn't mean only one, but it means at least one. So there's at least one student who attended uh, every class session of discrete mathematics. And so I wrote that informally as there is a student who attended every class session of discrete mathematics. Okay. Um, now, let's consider some other statements about multiple quantifiers to better understand how subtle changes can affect the meaning. Okay, so we're going to keep the content of this the same, the subject matter, um, but we're going to move some things around. So for all students X, there exists a class session Y of discrete mathematics such that X attended Y. Okay. Again, if you want to pause and, and kind of write down what you think this is saying, okay, go ahead and do that. Um, but I'm going to continue here and say that what this is saying, we start with the universal quantifier, right? So we're saying something about all students. And we're saying for all students X, there exists a class session Y of discrete mathematics such that X attended Y. Okay, now here's a, a subtlety about this that might not be, um, or that might be unexpected to you, but it's a really important one to understand how to interpret this. When you've got that universal quantifier followed by the existential quantifier, the important thing to understand is that it's not saying that the class session Y is the same for every student X. Okay, so the class session can depend on what student you're talking about. Um, so in other words, it's saying for every student that you pick, there is a class session such that the student attended that class session, but it doesn't have to be the same class session for every student. So the way I wrote that informally, every student has attended at least one class session of discrete mathematics. Okay. So again, I, I want to write that in a way that does not imply that it's the same session for all the students. But all it's claiming is that every student that you pick has at least attended a class session. Maybe, maybe all different ones, but, um, but every student has at least attended once. Okay. 
this is this is difficult stuff. So if 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 uh, you need to watch through this a couple times or read through the textbook a couple times for this uh, for this material or more than a couple times, you know uh, that's totally understandable um, because it really involves um, you know some some nuanced uh, aspects of of formulating these statements. Right. So, uh, okay. So this one says there exists a class session Y of discrete mathematics such that for all students X, X attended Y. Okay. Now, this is saying that there's a class session that everyone attended. Okay. I, I tried to emphasize in the previous example that it was not saying that. This one is saying that. So it and. The way that we know that is it starts by saying there exists a class session. So we're talking about what follows that is describing what's going on with this class session. And again, it could be more than one, but for at least one class session, every student attended. There was a class session which was attended by all students. Okay. One last variation that we haven't looked at yet. For all class sessions Y of discrete mathematics, there exists a student X such that X attended Y. Okay. So again, same issue that I said before, that if you have the universal first and the existential second, that um, the the existential part doesn't have to be the same for every element that you're talking about in the universal part. Okay, so um, to put that in, in terms of this example, it can be a different student for each class session. We're not saying that it's the same student every time. Okay, so again, reading through this for all class sessions Y of discrete mathematics, there exists a student X such that X attended Y. So all this is saying is that every class session had at least one student in attendance. Okay, in other words, there weren't any sessions where nobody showed up. Every class session of discrete mathematics was attended by at least one student. Okay, and again, doesn't have to be the same student every time, um, but what this is claiming is that if you look at the attendance records for each meeting, that at least per or at least one person was there, um, no matter which session that you look at. Okay, now I, I want to um, move on to negations, and we talked about negations with one quantifier involved, but now we're going to talk about negations where you've got multiple quantifiers. And the good news is it doesn't change things very much. Um, in fact, if you understand how negations work when there's one quantifier, I'm sure you'll understand this just as well. Um, because what we do is really the same thing. We're going to reverse the quantifier. So universal becomes existential, existential becomes universal, and then we negate the predicate. Okay, and they, here you see the predicate is written as P of XY because we've got two variables, so the predicate um, could involve both variables. So if the original looks like this, for all X and D, there exists Y and E such that P of XY, the negation of that would say there exists X and D such that for all Y and E, not P of X, Y. Okay. Be a little careful whenever you're writing negations with quantified statements, and this, this goes for whether there's one or multiple quantifiers. Uh, be a little careful with, uh, you know, some of the, the, um, the language that comes along with the quantifiers. So when you have the existential, you'll have the such that, um, and then generally after the universal, you're going to have a comma, 
Um, just want to be careful so that it reads properly. Okay, here's the other way that our original might look. We could have there exists x in d such that for all y and e, d of x, y, if we negate that, then again, we, we reverse the quantifiers. Existential becomes universal. Universal becomes existential. And then we negate the predicate. Okay. Um, when we look at the ex some exercises from this section, we'll look at a particular example where we need to do this. Um, the next and last section in chapter three talks about arguments with quantified statements. Okay, so uh, in the previous chapter, we first talked about arguments and validity of arguments, and this is going to connect that idea with these quantified statements. Okay, so that'll be the next video. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, see you in the next one.